In this screencast, we'll give you some help with the Module 2, Lesson 29 homework, which consists of word problems. So we'll give you a hand with it. We're not going to solve them for you. It'll be very helpful if you know how to interpret tape diagrams, because that's how I'm going to explain the problems. Let's read the first problem. It says Michelle wants to save $150 for a trip to Six Flags Amusement Park. If she saves $12 each week, how many weeks will it take her to save enough money for the trip? Well, we know the whole, and that's 150 so let's set up a tape diagram. Bracket the 150 Now, she saves $12 a week, but we don't know how many weeks, so I'm going to just take this. and uh, There are variations on how to do this, but I'm going to say each one of these is $12. We have one, two, I don't know how many. I'm going to put my ellipsis in there. And the last one's going to be a question mark. So we need to know how many groups of 12 there are. Well, each one of these groups is the same size. So it should be clear what operation we need to perform this. I just want to say, if your answer ends up with a decimal, we need to think about that. Because we're not going to talk about decimal weeks, we're going to talk about whole weeks. So think about that in the event that you have a decimal answer for the number of weeks. The next one is a bit more complex. It says Karen works for 85 hours throughout a two-week period. She earns $1,891.25 throughout this period. How much does she earn for eight hours of work. Well, we have the number of hours she worked and we have the uh, amount of money she makes. So we need to find out how many, how, mu how much does she make per hour? And that's how much she makes in one hour. Once we find one hour, we can easily find eight hours. We don't need to know the two week period. So what's the whole amount? And what's being divided into portions? Well, the whole is the money she makes. So we have $1,891.25. And we know that that's divided into 85 parts. Of course, we're not going to make a diagram with 85 boxes, but we're going to now represent it this way. What we don't know is how much per hour. <clears throat> Again, pretty simple. Uh, we're taking our $1,891.25 and we're splitting it into 85 hours. Once we do that, we find out how much she makes in one hour. But we need to know how much she makes in eight hours. So once we find one hour, and we don't know the amount, whatever that amount is in this question mark here, to find eight hours, what do we have to do? Well, I can make a tape diagram, but I think it's pretty obvious. And whatever that amount is in one hour, that's that question mark. Whatever the value is there goes there. And now we're going to have this eight times. One, two, ellipsis, and eight. And then we find out her total in eight hours. So this question mark, the answer to this question mark over here, is going to give us the amount to put in here. And ultimately, the answer to the question is over here. It's um, the money in eight hours work. All right, on to the next one. This one's pretty complicated. The area of a rectangle is 256 and 5 tenths meters squared. If the length is 18 meters, what is the perimeter? So we have a problem that's dealing with both area and perimeter. Let's think about what we know about finding area. We know the area. We find length times width. We have the length already, but we don't have the width. So we'll have to figure that out. We know that the perimeter is the sum of all the sides. And since it's a rectangle, we know that opposite sides are the same measure. We'll draw some pictures. We know that the area is 256 and 5 tenths meters squared. We know that the length is 18. We have to figure out, well, if we know that the area is length times width here, I'm going to change that to uh, 
W for width. It's going to look a little bit like algebra. We're going to have to say 18 times whatever the width is equals 256 and 5 tenths. When we're missing a factor, we should know what kind of problem that becomes. It becomes the inverse operation. Now, once we have our width, okay, we need to we need to calculate our perimeter. So, whatever the value is for w and w for the width, we'll find those values when we do this part of the problem. We know that this is 18. So we know that the answer is the sum of these sides. There's a number of ways to calculate that. Um, use whatever way you like. Uh, again, use the area model to find the width. And then label your rectangle and find the perimeter by finding the sum of the sides. Another fairly complicated problem. Tyler baked 702 cookies. He sold them in boxes of 18. After selling all the boxes of cookies for the same amount each, he earned $136.50. What is the cost of one box of cookies? Well, first of all, we need to find out how many uh, boxes he made. So we know that we have 702 cookies. We know they went into boxes of 18, so each one of these boxes is 18. But we don't know how many boxes. We have to calculate that first. Okay, so that should uh, look fairly familiar. We have a hole. We're looking for equal parts. We should know what to do with that after looking at the tape diagram and listening to this conversation. So once we find out how many boxes We need to look at another tape diagram to calculate the rest. We know that he makes a total of 136 dollars and 50 cents. And once we find the number of boxes, okay, go one, two, ellipsis, and this is the number of boxes, which is the answer to this problem right here. And again, they're all in equal parts, so we know the whole. We're finding equal parts. Again, we should be able to figure out when we're taking a whole and splitting it into equal parts, what operation are we doing. The last one here, I'm going to uh, make some diagrams once again. Let's read carefully. A park is four times as long as it is wide. If the distance around the park is 12 and 5 tenths kilometers, what is the area of the park? All right, well, we have this first information to look at here. So let's now talk about the width. Well, we'll represent that width with one box. Now we'll talk about the length. Well, it's four times as long, so we'll now represent that with four boxes because it's four times as long. Now if we're looking at the distance around the park, we're looking at what? Okay, we're looking at the width, the length, the width, and the length. And we have to find the sum of those sides. So we're not done here. I only have represented one width. So I'm going to represent another width and another length. We know that the sum of all of these is 12 and 5 tenths. If I look at my boxes here, I can count them. And each one of these boxes is equal. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I have a total of 10 boxes. Each one of these boxes is the same. So in order to do that, we need to find out one of these, what the value is the one of these boxes. And once we find the value of each one of these boxes, we have the width. And when we do that, we can find the length by multiplying the width times 4, because it's 4 times as long as it is wide. 
So that gives us the length and the width. And remember, to calculate the area, once we know the length and the width, we need to multiply length times width equals area. And we should know that by now anyway. So again, we're going to split 12 and 5 tenths into 10 equal parts. Each single part is a width, and 4 times the width is the length. We plug those numbers into here, we find the area.